How are you, my friends? This uh, video is a continuation of the basic math terms playlist. This is part 15, still in the algebra course about transformations of functions. The words we will see today, there are 10 transformation, vertical shifting, horizontal shifting, reflection, even function and odd function. These came from lecture number 31. There are stretching and shrinking. They were explained in lecture 32. Combinations of functions and composition of functions. These were in lecture number 33. So transformations of functions mean simple or complicated change or switch in the appearance of a certain graph or transforming the function from one form to another. So there are changes made on the function like, like these are examples like shifting, moving, we shift the graph to the right two units or up one unit or down three units or left five units or we make a reflection here, see the word reflection, that's part of transformation, or we make stretching or shrinking. I will explain all these words. Now the vertical shifting, we have the original graph here is the, the blue one, y equals f of x. We can shift the graph up. See this is shifting up, if we add a number here, f of x plus c, so we call this in mathematics, shifting vertical. Now we can shift the graph, this is the blue, shifted down or downward, C units. So it will be F of X minus C. We can have also horizontal, horizontal to the right and to the left. So the blue function here, you see y equals f of x. If we shift to the right c units, it will be f of x minus c. So when you shift on the right, on the left, x is changing. When you shift up and down, y is changing. Same thing here, if we have f of x plus c, then the graph is shifted to the left. See the formulas also written here in these two lines. Reflecting. This is not shifting, this is a reflection. So we have the graph like this, y equals f of x. If there is a minus outside the function, then we say, so minus f of x. This is a reflection of the graph in the x-axis or around x-axis or about x-axis. So this is a reflection in the x. And this is reflection in the y, if we have instead of the x, y equals f of x, y equals f of minus x. See, this is a reflection in the y-axis. Vertical stretching and shrinking. This is vertical. So we have now also this blue graph here. See, this is y equals f of x. That's the original one. If we have a number c greater than 1, Let's say C is 2 or 2.5 or 7 or 5.6 or 10.1 or 11, any number, C is greater than 1. So if you multiply that with the function, then you have, you see this one here? You can put your fingers here and you stretch it. See the red one is stretching vertical of this blue graph. Same thing if C between 0 and 1, small number, positive number, remember, C here is positive. It will be shrinking, so it will be smaller. You shrink it vertical. Now, C positive, as I said, between zero and one, C greater than one will be vertical stretching. If there is a minus, let's say minus 5.8, so the minus will go back here in the reflection. See, the minus will be counted as a reflection. Okay. Now, this is horizontal. Horizontal, when you see 
the small c is multiplied in the x. If c greater than one, big number multiplied by the x, you see c greater than one, it will be shrinking horizontally. So it will be smaller, but horizontally by the factor one over c. And then if c is between zero and one, let's say half or one third, it will be stretching horizontally like the red graph. Even function, these are functions, remember, not numbers. We have even numbers, odd numbers. This is even function. One the function, we call it even function. If f of minus x is equal f of x, like this one. This is an even function. This is an even function. This is an even function. So even function are symmetric with respect to the y-axis. If the y-axis divides the function into two equal pieces, like ln of absolute value of x, y equals x squared or sine absolute value of x. So if the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, the function we call it even function or f of minus x is equal f of x. Now the odd function is f of minus x is equal minus f of x. Odd functions are symmetric about the origin, like this one, one over x. You see the graph, every point on the graph, there is another point where the origin is the midpoint. This one, f of x, x minus x cubed. This is symmetric about the origin. f of x is equal sine of x. Symmetric about the origin. Now, two important remarks about even and odd functions. Please pay attention here. Remark number one and remark number two. Remark number one, no function. This is tricky in the exam. No function is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Somebody might ask you, give me any function you can think of, imagine any function symmetric with respect to the x-axis. So you start thinking, the answer will be, no function is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Why? Because if it is symmetric about the x, like this graph, like this graph, see this is symmetric about the x. It will not be a function if we draw a vertical line test. You know, we know vertical line test. It will cut the graph in two points. So this is not function. We call this relation. This is not function. Because for, for one x here, we will have two values for the y. Same thing here. x equals y squared. x equals minus square root of 4 minus y squared. The second one, if the function is not even and not odd, we just call it neither. So it is a normal function. We have many, many, many functions that they are not even and not odd. Combinations of functions, what mean by combine? We combine. See the word here in English, combine. So we can take two functions or more in this slide, you will see here two functions, f and g, but you can take more. It's up to you, three functions, four, five, six, seven, it's up to you, it depends on the situation. So if we have two functions here, we can add them, f plus g of x will be f of x plus g of x. So this is a combination of functions. So we can take the sum, we can take the difference, we can take the product, we can take the quotient. Quotient, when we divide, two functions f over g of x will be f of x divided by g of x. And also on top of that, we can find the domain of these combinations after we add, after we subtract, after we multiply, after we divide, the domain will be for the new function. Remember the big new function, it will be domain of f intersection. I think you know that intersection domain of g. It's not the addition, we add the functions or subtract them. But if we need the domain, it will be domain of F, intersection domain of G. Composition of two functions. So this is also another verb, compose. Compose is to form, 
or shape or to set up. So we compose two functions. We put F circle G. See, this is not a product. F circle G of X. This is the way we read it. F of G of X. So we can have a number here, X. We find the image G of X. Then we take that number and we replace it in the F. So we will get F of G of X. This is the way to read this on the right side. F of G of X. So this is the image of the image. You know, when you have a number X, to find G of X, we call it in, in math or in English, we call it the image, the Y value of the X. And then find the image of this G of X by the function F. So we call this F circle G of X. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I hope I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you guys for listening.